Galchenyuk. Rashad, he scores! Oh, you're not going to stop that. Keller for Cousins. To the front, they score! Oliver Eklund, Larson. Towards the net, rebound. Oh. Oh. It was a season of progress for the Arizona Coyotes both on and off the ice during the 18-19 campaign. And tonight we'll be giving you an in-depth look back as well as a glance forward at everything the organization is looking to accomplish as they continue to build on a strong season. The Arizona Coyotes state of the pack starts now. Hey everyone, Kristen Keough here. Welcome to the State of the Pack, where tonight we'll be chatting with Coyotes head coach Rick Tockett, President and CEO Aaron Cohen, and the one-of-a-kind duo of Paul Bissonette and Tyson Nash as we take an in-depth dive into all things Coyotes. The Coyotes made a huge improvement on the ice this season, increasing their point total by 16 over the previous season and falling just short of the final playoff spot in the Western Conference, despite having several key contributors out with injury throughout the year. But the team's success wasn't limited to the ice as the Coyotes continued to grow their presence in the community and in the digital space with the direction of President and CEO Aaron Cohen and the larger-than-life personalities of Paul Bissonette and Tyson Nash. But we're going to kick things off tonight with the man behind the bench who turned the team into a playoff contender in just two seasons at the helm. Coach Tockett, thanks so much for joining us on State of the Pack. Good to see you in the off season. Yeah, it's uh, you know you're trying to enjoy your off season. It's tough watching the playoff games because you wish you're involved, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been going fun this year. Yeah, and speaking of that, your team overcame so many injuries and still came within four points of a playoff spot. When you look back at the season, how do you feel? Well, you, 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 as a coach, you know, you're, you're really uh, excited about the upcoming year because I think we played important, we wanted to play important games down the stretch. I mean, obviously the goal, like every team, is to make the playoffs. Um, I like the way the team reacted through the, uh, the devastating injuries. We had the, the quality of players that came out of the lineup. I like the way we didn't give up. Um, I like the culture change that guys have, uh, have bought into that we want to do around here. Uh, it's hard to win. Um, the guys know that. And it's going to take another level uh, this summer and next year to, 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 to bring your, your game to another level. So I think that's something that we've been preaching to players all summer. Backhander, Nieto, rebound, oh, what a stop, Kemper! And one of the most devastating injuries, of course, early in the season, losing number one goaltender, Auntie Ronta. We did see Darcy Kemper step in, and he was quite impressive. How do you feel about his performance? And also, are you excited to have two number one goaltenders next season? Yeah, I'm really excited about that. You know, we're gonna have a healthy Auntie, um, and then obviously Darcy, and what can you say about Darcy? I mean, you know, the, to me, the pivotal part of our team was when he went down, and I know Darcy played a few games, but he didn't play that well. And I remember he initiated a meeting with, uh, with our management and, and, and Corey Schwab, our, our, our great goaltending coach, and said, I'm not good enough. And if I don't play better, and you know, we're not gonna win around here. And he put it on him. And from that meeting on, you know, he was the MVP of the team. Like, he was terrific. So to have that mentality, that character of, of a guy coming back with Ante, everybody loves Ante, what he can do when he's healthy, you know, we're really solid in the Nets. I'm excited about that uh, goaltending tandem. That to me is a team, right? It's not about individuals, it's not cooking night. We play the right way, everybody's going to be successful. In it's addition fun. to losing your goaltender, you lost many other key players. Who else did you see step up and help this team come so close to a playoff spot? You know, it's collectively, I, I give the team in general, they, they all uh, stepped up. Um, but I, I really like the development of a lot, a lot in Kraus, you know, Lascar. He was, he really developed from, you know, you're talking about a guy who played in Tucson last year. And I played him a regular shift, and he was a really guy that I counted on. Um, Archibald, you know, Josh was really played really well in those roles for us. You know, I thought he did a nice job. I thought our defense is a group. You know, OEL, obviously, our captain leading the Charger. I think we we're fifth best uh, defensive team in the league. And then the, the last 40 year before, I think we we're the top one of the top teams. So that's an identity I've really liked that these guys have stepped up and really like to defend the puck first before, obviously we've got to score goals, but defending the puck is something that they've taken pride. And I think especially when we had these injuries, they took a lot of pride in that mentality. 
And, of course, we have to talk about the penalty kill. That was one of your yeah. huge strengths this season. What was the key to getting so many shorthanded goals, and who were the leaders there? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, obviously Richardson, uh, Grabner, and, uh, and Hammer, uh, Charmelson, those three guys kind of spearhead the penalty kill, the attitude, the work ethic, um, and actually, you know, just overall aggressiveness. Uh, and then, you know, all those guys filled in, you know, stepped in a good job, and then you go, you know, when OEL or or uh, Demers when he was in the lineup. Um, those type of guys filled in, but those three guys really spearheaded that penalty kill. And for the shorthand goals, I mean, that, that one month stretch was crazy. I mean, they, we were scoring at a, at a great pace. That to me is it's a system thing, the way we played, uh, we were aggressive, and then when a team made a mistake, we counter, counter punched them on it, and I think that really helped us. Stop by Kemper, loose on the crease. They can't get it on ball. You came stop. to the Coyotes from Pittsburgh, and you helped the Penguins win two Stanley Cup championships. And in just two seasons here, you have come in, you've changed the culture in the dressing room, and you've really raised the expectations overall. How have you done that? Well, I, I think, you know, the mindset of the players is something that, um, you know, something as a coach, you really got to work with them. You know, uh, every player wants to be to win. Every player wants to be, you know, their ice time. Every player wants to be good. Um, and there's different roads roads to, to to get to that level. And I think there's a partnership between the coach and the players. And I think that's something we've done well. Our coaching staff with the players is there's a partnership, and we we've kind of talked about it. And I I wanted to raise these guys' expectations on on on, on winning and what it takes. And it, you know, I didn't like the way we practiced when I first got here. I, I didn't think we were a team that practiced well. That's something that we got better at. Uh, the way we prepared for games, I thought we prepared a lot better. They were more focused. Um, and, you know, there were certain times I was hard on the guys, and I think they understood that. You know, a lot of guys, you know, they took it. Like OEL especially, I think uh, if you talk about the mentality of our team from two years ago till now, um, he's one guy that uh, he's really... He's climbed the ladder in the leadership and stuff, and I think it's he's bought into what we're doing around here, and you can see the players following him, and I think that's the pattern we're trying to do around here. Absolutely. And when September gets here yeah. and the guys report for camp, Ronta will be back, Schmaltz will be back. That's going to be really exciting to see you get to work with a healthy roster. What are your expectations for next season? Well, I mean, obviously you want to improve. Uh, you know, obviously every coach wants more wins and, and, and playoffs. Uh, to me, I want us to improve. I think there's another level we can achieve. I think with the, some healthy bodies back is going to create competition. You know, there's, we're going to have more, the depth is going to raise. You know, all of a sudden you're getting adding four or five players that you didn't have that were hurt last year. Now they get in the lineup. Now what happens? Everybody's got to raise their expectations and their level of play. It's only going to help our team out. Um, so that's something that. Uh, the expectation of this team, I, I expect these, this team to improve from last year. Um, we're going to have to have a lot more points to get in the playoffs. We all know, know that. Uh, but for me, September, I can't wait for September, our training camp, and our mentality has to start from day one. Um, that we know it's a long road, but uh, each day you got to come here and bring energy. That's one thing that I've asked this team to do is bring er energy every day. Win or lose, they've done that for me, and I think that's something we have to continue to raise. There is so much to look forward to, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Kristen. Next up on State of the Pack, we'll be talking to President and CEO Aaron Cohen about the business side of the organization and the team's commitment to the Arizona community. Oh, and we'll be talking to these two clowns as well. Ask for a cot. Ask for a cot. Oh, what about an extra cot? Perfect. Send it up. Thank you very much. Hey, oh, oh I thought you were going to give me. You want to give me a couple scoops of hockey now? Is that room service? Oh, yeah, room service is backed up. It's all boys. I don't know how to use all the hot water. By the looks of it, it looks like you had a cold shower. <laughs> I mean, if there's anybody who knows about cold showers, it's you, Nash. <laughs> oh, speaking of showers. Good one, JD. I got another story. Oh, shit. Speaking of showers, I got a good one for you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Are they as good as your last stories? I mean, close. Maybe a little bit better. This could be the funniest one. What do you think? You want to hear it? Oh, what? absolutely. Can't wait for it. For me, it was another level for this organization, another level where we, we, we brought ourselves to. Here comes Grabner. He moves. He shoots. He scores! Galchenia. Rishai scores! Oh, you're not going to stop that. We have a lot of pushing to do this summer. But overall, I mean, I'm, I'm really proud of the players. The Weekender Package is back for 2019-20. Get tickets to every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday regular season game. Plus, get two street hockey sticks, ball, and net. Call 480-563-PUCK. About time we watched it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. 
Wait, a new truck? Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. A lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. When it's this hot, make a quick getaway and a big splash all at once. Get the summer's best staycation experience at the only entertainment destination in the valley that lets you relax your way. Your best summer is waiting. So you do you. Only at Gila River Hotels and Casinos, Wild Horse Pass, Lone Butte, and Viquiva. Every now and then I get a little bit thirsty for a dose aquí. Dose Every now and then I get a little bit hungry and I also need a side of nacho. One more nacho. Every now and then I order toast. And I need to take it tonight. And I, need and I also like some hot wings. Make your summer jams even hotter with Dos Equis. Keep it interessante. Welcome back to State of the Pack. We are joined now by Coyote's president and CEO, Aaron Cohen. Thanks for being here, Aaron. My pleasure, this is great. Yeah, great to catch up with you in the off season, especially after such an amazing year. It was so successful both on the ice and off the ice. So what are your thoughts as you look back? Yeah, I think it was great. We did a lot of great things as an organization this year. We took a lot of steps forward, and uh, yeah, I think we were very deliberate and intentional about achieving our, our core goals. And uh, you know, we're really uh, proud of everybody that played a, a significant role in making this happen. And there were some really huge areas of improvement on the business side as well, specifically with uh, TV ratings, everything from ticket sales to merchandise sales too. What can you tell us about that aspect? Yeah, I mean, almost everything that we did, we set a franchise record in double digit growth and uh, you know, really proud of our work there. I mean, 26% increase in TV ratings and uh, you know, it's all because of the fans, uh, the fans supporting us and, and listening to our message and seeing what we're trying to do. And uh, you know, we're just excited for next season and where we can go from here. And you have made it clear that giving back to the community is a huge part of what this organization does. Why does that matter so much to you? Yeah, I think it's a, a core tenant of any sports team. I mean, they need to be an integral part of this community and, and uh, really an asset for everybody in this community to enjoy. So last year we gave $2.7 million back to the community. This past year it was $3 million. Uh, and we're just going to continue to see that rise and, and move forward. So that's incredibly important. Are there any community projects that you are particularly proud to be a part of? Anything that feels just extra special to you? Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's that's a tough uh, thing to answer because everything is so impactful and, and really touches your heart. But, uh, you know, getting out there and, and participating in the playground build and, and seeing a school that didn't have a playground and then everybody coming together in our entire organization and building a playground in like, five hours is, is pretty remarkable. So, uh, you know, that really stands out. Also our work with uh, Phoenix Children's Hospital, getting there and, and spending time with the kids and seeing the smiles on the kids' faces when our players are coming there really, uh, really touches your heart. So we were able to contribute to them both financially and also just being there and showing up and, and really uh, cheering those kids up. Yeah, it's amazing at that event to just yeah. see how excited the kids are and how much the players care too. I love that particular event as well. Now you have a lot going on. We know that it's a busy summer for you, even though it is the off season. You there have, is no off season. Yeah, exactly. You have the NHL draft, the schedule release, development camp. So there's a lot on your mind, but for fans, everybody wants to know what can we look forward to next season? So is there anything you can tell us? Yeah, well, I think it's just continuing to pursue our core goals. I mean, our, our hockey team, we're focused on uh, producing a winning team and, and a team that this whole community can be really proud of. Uh, we're going to continue in, to engage the fans and provide great content, you know, with Biz and Tyson and all those other guys and uh, really engage with our fans both externally and also inside the arena. We're going to provide a great fan experience, so new food and beverage options, uh, new fun things to do at the arena before the game, good theme nights that I know you're a big part of. Oh, I love that. I hope we have a lot of opportunities to get dressed up in costumes because I love that. The fans love it. It's great. Exactly. 
And then uh, we're pushing the, the weekender plan very hard right now. So that's a really fun thing and you know convenient for families to get out to games. And everybody that gets a weekender ticket package is also going to get a street hockey set so we can continue to grow the I game. I love and that. That's a lot of fun. And, and it's going to be the place to be. And breaking news here, uh, we're going to have Kachina Saturdays back with the Kachina jerseys. So it's going to be the place to be on Saturday nights. It's going to be a lot of fun. Awesome. My Kachina jersey is my favorite thing I own. I feel instantly happy when I get to rock my Kachina you, jersey. You can never have too much Kachina. You uh, can I always agree. buy more. Aaron, thank you so much. Thanks, always Kristen. good to see you. Yeah, great to see you. And if you want more information on that Weekender plan, just go to ArizonaCoyotes.com slash Weekender. Coming up next, I sit down with Paul Bissonnette and Tyson Nash to talk about the importance of showing off player personalities. And you know that we had to talk about those onesies. Could you imagine getting 20 tucks? Even in the coast, 20 tucks. Wow, I mean, you wanna hear a story? Sure. So, never scored a 20 in the national, but American League. Hey. Here's my surprise face. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. For me, it was another level for this organization, another level where we, we, we brought ourselves to. Here comes Grabner. He moves, he shoots, he scores! Galchenia, Rishani scores! Oh, you're not going to stop that! We have a lot of pushing to do this summer, but overall, I mean, I'm, I'm really proud of the players. The Weekender Package is back for 2019-20. Get tickets to every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday regular season game. Plus, get two street hockey sticks, ball, and net. Call 480-563-PUCK. About time we washed it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. A lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. It's time to feed your unique appetite and explore all manners of taste. Indulge in your individuality and let the real you out to play. Your best life is waiting. So you, do you. Only at Gila River Hotels and Casinos, Wild Horse Pass, Lone Butte, and Viquiva. I knew this was going to be tough. <laughs> and Dos Equis is known for its refreshing taste and perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. It's okay, Daddy. I'm sorry. I love those eggs so much. <laughs> Make weddings unforgettable with Dos Equis. Keep it interessante. <laughs> He's a bad wetter. He hey, is. you guys want any room service? Oh, check his sheets. Oh. What? You want any room service? Sure. You want room service? Uh, no, I'm good. I'll get some ice cream. Oh, vanilla? I'm retired. Yeah, I get some ice cream. Vanilla and chocolate syrup? <laughs> yes, please. I know, that's what he likes. Yes. We'll do some vanilla ice cream and some chocolate syrup as well, please. Perfect. And uh, can you please put that on a dome credit card? With two of the more colorful personalities in the game on the broadcast side, Paul Bissonnette and Tyson Nash, the Coyotes have made an effort to show fans a side of their favorite hockey players they wouldn't normally get to see with digital content series like Pillow Talk, Road Trippin' with Biz, The Bachelor Report, and Step On Behind the Mic. I sat down with the dynamic duo to talk about how the game has changed and how hockey players are finally opening up and showing off their larger-than-life personalities. Paul and Tyson, thanks so much for joining us on State of the Pack. Great to be here. Been a while. I forgot I actually had to put my makeup on, so oh. uh, you know I kind of missed that. You really pulled it off, though. It looks Did great. Did I? Yeah. The power washer that Paul used, not so much, right? I got the television tongue back too, so I won't be messing anything up. It's hard to get back in rhythm. I know. You I know. Some time off I know. here. Yeah, it's like a little warm up right now, yeah. so that you don't go too long without being in front of the camera. He forgot so. how to do his hair, as you can see. It's because he drove over in the Bronco. Well, the toupee is on sideways right now. <laughs> I gotta make sure the chin strap's done up uh, extra tight. You're in mid-season. <laughs> extra tight, like your shirt. Hold. Holy jeez. <laughs>
Oh, <laughs> medium. See, yeah. now this is exactly why the Coyotes organization decided to have you guys be a huge part of the original content that they've been creating over the past couple of seasons. And of course, everybody loves pillow talk. Seeing you guys in onesies, lying down in bed, it's hilarious. I got to ask, how do you guys just control the laughter enough to even get through the production? Hilarious or scary? I mean, it's I, a mix of both. Yeah, a mix of both for sure. <laughs> Those things are hot, by the way, too. Um, but it's it's a ton of fun. I mean, the best part of of hockey is, you know, that's that's a real thing. Guys hanging out. That's the, really the only part that I miss the about playing. Yeah, yeah. Fart the fart sacks. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. You say that. Wow. I guess you can say that. Well, you can say anything you want. Actually, yeah. they would get stuck in those zip up outfits. Yeah. So I guess, yeah. Well, you got a trap door in the back. So it's, you know. Yeah, do you get like chest hair caught in the in the onesie uh, zipper? Yeah, I'm kind of clean. He's a little, he's like a Sasquatch, but. Yeah, in all seriousness, uh, no, uh, working with him is super easy and it's nice. We have very similar personalities. So when we do it, we're actually having a lot of fun. And uh, we, Same birthday? I, same Wait, no, no same, way. You yeah. have the same birthday? Yeah. When March is that? 11th. Okay. Well, same I missed potato, it. Happy belated. Yeah, we're basically the same. I thought that person. was an elbow on your face. Yeah, no, it's a nose. He always <laughs> resorts back to that. <laughs> yeah, me. it goes back and forth though. So. It, you're not the, the victim here, okay? Yeah. So you, that's why you it's dish so easy it to, too. To but the pillow contact. talk though. Back to your question, if we can get back there. I mean, as a hockey player, that's what it's all about. You're on the road. You're hanging out with your roommate. You're sitting there talking. You're ordering room service, and you're telling stories. I mean, that's how you get to know each other. That's how you build camaraderie. The one problem though is finding stories that we get actually tell that we're PG enough to, to put on the, the website and <laughs> oh, Twitter. Oh, I'm managed. sure. We did a good we, job, we buddy. Did. Yeah, we you do a great job. It's kid-friendly, yeah. you know, and those are some of your biggest fans. In fact, now you guys mentioned you have similar personalities, and you guys really do have great personalities, but you didn't come from a TV background. You were actual hockey players. So how did you become so comfortable in front of the camera? Well, there's, you know, uh, I've never seen Paul, uh, you know, a mirror he didn't like. So <laughs> if there's a microphone around, he, he's on it. Um, and I was the same way when I played. I mean, you got to bring personality, and that's what I think we're trying to get out of the players. The, the hockey players, I think, have the best personalities in pro sports. And you want, and I was a broadcaster, you want to get that out. You want to join in with them. You want to, you know, have a lot of back and forth. But you want the fans to get to know um, the athletes that they're paying the big bucks. You want them wearing their jerseys for a reason, because they are all great guys. Uh, it's a pretty tame sport too when you're playing it. They usually tell you to avoid showing personality. It's just kind of the culture. But you know, we were the clowns in the locker room, and as he mentioned, there's tons of great personalities, but maybe not a lot of guys who want to take that step and, and show it and be in front of the camera. You know, just just getting your reps and doing it, and and of course I mentioned coming in and him already being here. He's been a great mentor and in, 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 you know teaching me tricks and just just his overall confidence and vibe has helped me out a lot. And and it's been fun. It's been a great transition. Well, and the culture is changing a little bit because of the digital presence and all of the content that fans really want now on social media. And you know we have the Bachelor Report and Step Behind the Mic in addition to Pillow Talk, and we're starting to see our own. Play players show off their personalities. Why is that good for the Coyotes and the NHL in general? Well, I mean, it goes back to something you said at lunch yesterday. We met with uh, with the group and, and kind of went over the positives of the year. I think we were third overall in the entire league in social engagement on, on social media. And for you know a small franchise, that's huge. So we're trying to take a step in that right direction. But what you were saying was the fact that you know this organization gives us access to these guys maybe more so than any other team in the league. Yeah, and that's that's huge. And it goes back to the whole thing about wanting to sell these hockey players. I mean, again, they're 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 unreal human beings. I mean, they're sweethearts. And when we played, we weren't really supposed to be in front of the camera. We weren't supposed to be. I mean, we didn't have social media back when I played. That's how old uh, how old I am. And it's probably a good thing. But um, you know, these guys are they're they're funny. Um, and the fans are, are loving it, as, uh, as you can see by the uh, interaction, as you mentioned. Oh, and, and they can relate, too, because they're probably watching The Bachelor, and, and now they're like, oh my god, these, yeah. you know, these, these superhumans uh, are, are doing the same things that we're doing away from the rink. So it it's just kind of ties it in nicely, and, and it's been good. Yeah, it is really fun to see your idols doing the same type sure. of things that you do. It just, yeah, it makes them look more and more human. Sometimes you guys do mix in a little bit of acting skill, though. It's not all just off the cuff. Sometimes I can tell you guys have put a lot of effort into it, and I need to know which one of you is the better actor. 
Well, I don't know if you've been doing any acting before I got here, but you're 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 natural. I'm going to pump your tires on this one. I'm going to say <laughs> with uh, with the lack of experience, naturally you're the better actor. Not even not even true. Not even close. This guy. The best part about Pillow Talk is watching this guy perform. I mean, he comes up with a lot of the uh, the skits, a lot of how we begin, a lot of how we end. Uh, he's got a real good imagination, believe it or not. He did have the best story on Pillow Talk, though, but it was when Donor was involved, was the Nicole Kidman story. Oh. So if you haven't if you haven't seen that one, you have to go back and listen to it. It is unbelievable. I'd actually surprisingly never heard the story before uh, the Pillow Talk, so thank you to Donor for bringing that. Well, I can't Shane believe Don brings out the best in people. Can we all agree on that? Oh, yeah. yeah, but it was, I can't believe we all fit in that bed with the, <laughs> ba with the big farmer don Donor in there. That was, that, that was hot. Hey, I play with Donor, and he used to yeah. sit on the bench like this where you oh, have yeah. no leg room. Riding a Harley. Yeah, he's riding yeah. a Harley. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, you guys made it work, and we all appreciate that because we absolutely love Pillow Talk and all of the different content. So is there anything that fans can look forward to for next season? Anything new? I, we're going to be cooking up some new ideas. The, if we talked about the, uh, the fact that we're trying to think of PG stories to tell on Pillow Talk. We're running dry on a little bit of ours. Hopefully we can implement some new characters and then, of course, a few different types of segments, maybe some... Uh, you know, get the buddies on the team going against each other on a little Q&A. Oh, uh, I love that. Yeah, because there's, you know, there's guys, uh, Keller and, and, and Fisher are inseparable. Um, uh, JD and, and Richardson usually have great chemistry when doing stuff. I mean, you saw that from The Bachelor Report. Inestrosa, Schmaltz, a lot of, like, pairs. Yeah. Like, couples. Yeah, besties. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have some couple, besties. couple games. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the fans will enjoy it. We can't give it all away, though, so. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Yeah, yeah I saw you zip the lips. But you yeah. know what? That just makes us anticipate it even more. So, you guys, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy your offseason. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go Coyotes. Much. Yeah. And he's in. Vinny! Game over! Two huge points for the Coyotes tonight. Even in the offseason, our pack finds a way to stay together, so we want to check in with fans and players on social media. We all know OEL is a huge supporter of the Boys and Girls Club of Scottsdale, and here he is making time for the kids during the offseason. He posted this to Instagram before departing for the World Championships. Nick Cousins is enjoying the offseason with a visit to Turks and Caicos. Meanwhile, Lawson Kraus doing some wine tasting in Napa. Looks like he went with a glass of red, and I think he can really pull off that hat that he's rocking. Jacob Chikrin posted this video of him fishing in Key West, Florida, and he posted the video of him reeling this thing in and then followed up with a picture so that we could all see the size of this monstrous fish. Very, very impressive. The Travis family enjoyed the Coyotes Paint the Ice event in April. Tons of fun out there. We really enjoyed getting to get down on the ice and decorate it with meaningful different pictures and words to summarize this season. Melissa got her stick signed by Vinny Henestrosa at the Yotes skating party in May. And here's another fan pick we wanted to share. Louie went all the way to Canada and he did not forget his Yotes gear. That beanie looks like the perfect way to stay warm at Jasper National Park. Remember, use our pack that hashtag so that we can see your posts. Dvorak over the line, across, and a goal! Clayton Keller, there it is! Set up beautifully by Dvorak, it's 1-0. Score! Oh, what a move! As you can see, there is plenty to be excited about if you're a Coyotes fan. With the improvements on the ice and commitment to growing the game, the Coyotes are one of the most exciting tickets in town and look to be for the foreseeable future. Thanks for joining us on State of the Pack.